What's up guys? This is Les with The Perfect Subject. We are back again with another video. Today we're doing a review on this bad boy right here, the Canon 1.2 50mm lens. It's a lens. So this review is gonna work a little bit different than what we've done in the past. I'm gonna bullet point all of the different specs, the things you can find with a quick Google search. We'll go over my experiences using the lens and throw up a couple images that I've taken with it along with a comparison between this and, and the 51.8. So with that, let's just jump right into it. As I said before, here's a bullet list with all the specs that you need to know. Feel free to pause the screen if you need to take a closer look at any of these things. Should I play the Jeopardy music? Am I gonna get copyrighted for that? I got like 12 subscribers that ain't happening. You may think to yourself, like I often do, can I justify this purchase? Does this make sense for my kit? Does it make sense financially? This is over a thousand dollars, almost two grand brand new. Is it really worth it? Is that silky background worth a thousand dollars? I will gladly tell you this lens is a significant upgrade to that 1.8. The 1.8 is great to get out there, get those, those travel shots and keep everything in a really tight, compact package with a smaller form factor without busting the bank as well. It's a cheap lens. It's made well, but it's a, it, it's a cheap lens. It's, it's $125. Do I think it's the best lens you can buy for the money? Probably. It's $125 for a banger of a lens. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about the 1.2. This thing is over $1,000. Like, that's a lot of money. For $1,000, you can get a 51.8. This Godox VL150 that's casting this beautiful light on me, if I do say so myself. You can get a tripod. You can get a whole assortment of gear and, and stuff to really kickstart you into your journey as a photographer. So if you're beginning, you're starting out and you're just looking to get the next best thing for you, I personally would say stick with the 51.8 and get the other gear. You're gonna save yourself money. And in the long run, those things that you're gonna be purchasing on the side are also going to come in handy. Now, if you already have this lighting set up, if you already have a tripod, if you have a camera, if you have a bunch of lenses already, and you're just looking to upgrade that arsenal of lenses, 51.2, amazing lens, hands down. I, if, if you are in a position to get one, get it. For starters, the focus ring on here is much smoother. It's wider, gives you a better grip all around. There's an internal focus breathing here, so the front element doesn't protrude out like it does in the 1.8. The increased size of the lens just makes it feel more comfortable. It, it just feels better in your hands, whereas the 1.2 kind of is just, it's a little too small at times. But when you're working with a client or trying to get a, a better shot out of it, that 1.8, the, the focus ring is pretty tiny and that it can be a downside at times. But the 1.2, has fixed that problem. Neither of the lenses have image stabilization, which I would have liked to see in a 1.2 that's gonna cost me as much as it does. But then again, my 85 1.2 also doesn't have image stabilization, so that's the thing, I guess. This lens is weather sealed. It does have that little bit of weather sealing around it, so you can be a little bit more adventurous with this lens. Outside of that, there are not too many differences between the 1.2 and the 1.8. They're both 50 millimeters. They both take excellent photos. The 1.2 is a little bit better. Although, one thing to point out, the chromatic aberration is far less apparent in the 1.2 than it is in the 1.8. 1.8 has that separation and it just, it doesn't, it doesn't look good all the time. There's been times where I take photos when I'm out traveling around with the 1.8 and I get back to the house and there's just, a pretty decent amount of chromatic aberration. When I take the 1.2 out though, I don't run into those issues as often. I think it's a really well-made lens and if you can afford it, I would suggest getting it. But you know, at the end of the day, it's gonna be up to you. This is your decision, this is your camera, this is your body, this is your life, live your life. I'm not gonna tell you what to do. And with that, I'm gonna throw some images up on the screen so you can take a look at the image quality. Tell me your feedback, give me your thoughts. I will also go ahead and throw up a side-by-side -side comparison of the 1.8 to the 1.2. Can you guess which one is which? Did, how, how'd you do on that? Did you get them right? Did you get any wrong? That's a better question. Tell me if you did, be honest. Don't, don't, don't lie. We don't have time for liars, man. 
Don't do it. Anyways, that's it for this review. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, you know, just hit the X. Just hit the little red X. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. I would appreciate it. I'm trying to, you know, continue taking this and see where I can go with it. But outside of that, that's it for today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and I will see you next time. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.